Facebook family and friends out there. It's good to see you. I hope you've had a wonderful week. Yes, we're still in COVID. We're all aware of that. Yes, it's hot. We're all aware of that. <laughs> but you're still here and we're all still blessed. I want you to know my guest here today, I know him from Pleasant Ridge Baptist Church. He does the audio visual there. One of his many talents. He also works for WNCW. 88.7, they're out of isothermal in Rutherford, North Carolina. And he has a beautiful wife, Bay Amy, and two fabulous boys. And his name is Mr. Joe Kendrick. How are you, Mr. Kendrick? Hey, you, Jerry. I'm oh, glad you got the memo to wear a purple shirt today. <laughs> I know. We do kind of match, yeah. don't we? <laughs> so tell my audience a little bit about yourself. So, I, like you said, I'm Amy Kendrick's husband and the father of two wonderful boys. And I've uh, been going to... Pleasant Ridge for many years and I've been a member there for a long time and our boys are I think the fifth generation of Pleasant Ridge Church oh. uh, in our family. Oh they, great. I, actually the church goes way back in on one side of our family so wow. that's neat that they get to continue that and, and they're really really having a great time and uh you know, outside of church, I love to work in the garden and listen to music and write and um, just keep keep going forward. Well, I tell you, when people think about radio, because I said you work at WNCW. Okay, you're the director? Program director. Program director. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of the time people think about radio, they think of music. Now, do you think music plays a role in these times we're going through, do you think music's important? Oh, sure. Yeah, very much so. I think that people will uh, be able to have some sense of comfort from songs that they're listening to, especially songs that they remember from maybe a better time or place that, that kind of puts them at ease, maybe. But... Um, you know, and music obviously at our station is foremost, but we also do news and, and part of the day and then at the top of the hour during most all the times during the weekdays. But, you know, radio also has a big base of talk radio uh, stations or formats or shows. So that can be a big thing uh, for people, too. I don't know how much necessarily it's comfort or how much of it is just wow. keeping it near to the ground with the news or, or with personalities. It could be sports. It could be a lot of things. But uh, like you say, you know, I think of music too when I think of the radio. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up listening to There really wasn't talk radio or much of anything like that when I grew up. So I always associated radio with music. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Yeah. Um, so does your radio station uh, serve the community, and if so, how do they do that? Sure, sure. So we will do a, a number of things. We cover a large area, so the, the transmitter for our station is actually on uh, Clemens Peak, which is near Mount Mitchell, so it's, it's almost 7,000 feet up, and it hits from Knoxville to Charlotte and from the Virginias down into Georgia, so it's a really wide area. Because it's kind of challenging to serve all of those communities. But what we do is we'll play music from regional artists, for one. But we'll also reflect the fabric of the region and the community by doing news that pertains to the region. And also um, interviews and cultural pieces. We're always basically getting out there and and reflecting what's going on. We're always talking about and taking part in a lot of these events, especially music events. But there are a lot of ways that we bring in people from different walks of life, either as volunteers on the radio station or as just certain um, pieces and parts of our programming or simply going out and interviewing somebody from the region about what's going on, whether it be news, or culture, what have you. Oh, okay. So, I mean, see, you, you just taught me something because I didn't know radio did all of that. So, it's neat. It's neat. So, um, what do you do in these times to keep yourself encouraged? I know 
you probably get a lot of calls. Do y'all take like call-ins and people ask for their favorite songs? Or sure, sure. So we take requests. They don't necessarily get on the radio when they make their request. I mean, we don't have that as as something that we do, but we do take requests. We get them all the time, and um, people tend to rely on us. You know, especially when the the shutdown was full on and people were stuck at home. That was a big time for us, and we realized that more people were listening, and they were relying on us to kind of help them get through. And it was, you know, it was incredibly anxious, and and nobody knew what was going to happen. It was really tough on everybody, and so we became a kind of a an anchor for a lot of people in some ways to just know that we were there, that we were something that they could turn to, and. Uh, that they could hear their song, they could, they could, uh, you know, just hear our voice. It'd be like a friendly voice in the room, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, like for someone who has no one, mm-hmm. that might be the only other voice outside their own yeah. that they could hear. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten a lot of those calls oh, over wow. the years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, you know, there's some heartbreak out there. There's a lot of hurt, but it's, it's. Encouraging at the same time to get those kind of calls when you can tell that somebody is really down. Um, I've had more than one occasion, and not just myself, people um, not necessarily call with this, but maybe write in at some point and say, you know, I don't know if I would have been able to make it. I went through a really terrible period, and I was, you know, maybe I was con- considering suicide or, or um, some people that have said exactly that it said but but y'all really helped us get through that and that's not necessarily because we're um you know we're not a a christian station although we do have uh one specifically gospel uh, music show um but just the fact that we were putting out something positive and and being there for them they you know how that can be you can You can find that one thing, that one constant, and hold on to it, and it can help guide you through. So that always really knocks me out when I hear something like that, and it has happened a number of times, a number of times over the years. That, to me, music is universal language, yeah. and it doesn't matter if you even speak the language or know the words they're saying. Sometimes it's the rhythm, it's the beat, it's the feel of the music. And like you said, you can be having a bad day. I mean, I'll, Amazing Grace is amazing. I don't yeah. care how you sing it, it's still Amazing Grace. You know, how great that art. You know, the old standards and hymns, sometimes you don't hear as much anymore, but I love those songs. And like you said, it soothes the heart, it calms you mm-hmm. down. And in that moment, you get the escape. You know, you get the escape into that song and the words and what it's saying to you and ministering to you. So I believe music is extremely important. I love music. Well, thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Thank you, you journalist. It's been great to be on the show. Oh, you're so All right. <laughs> you're very good. <laughs> you guys, if you're in the Rutherford area at WNCW 88.7 FM, Isothermal, right? Isothermal. Right. Tune in. Do you now? What's your name on? Do you have a particular name? No, I just go by Joe. Okay, you heard it from the man himself, <laughs> Joe. You're in the area. Call and say, "Hey, Joe, I seen you on that show." No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you guys, I hope to see you soon. And you take care. And we'll talk to you later. God bless. Love you. Bye bye. Thank you again, Mr. Joe Kendrick, for the interview. I really appreciate it. Now let's go down in the world word of prayer. Gracious, kind, loving Heavenly Father, it's once again that you've allowed us to see a brand new day. You've taken care of us throughout the week. You provided for our needs, and we want to say thank you. We want to thank you for continuing to walk with us through these perilous times and through these unsure times and that people just don't know what to do or what to trust 
or who to trust. We know that we can depend, rely, and have confidence in you, and we can trust you with all things. I pray that those who are watching today, that you will meet them at the point of their need, whatever their need is. We thank you in advance, God, for supplying. And we just please forgive us of our shortcomings, of our sins of commission and omission, and continue to be with us, stand by us, and take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, you're going to hear a song from Foster Krebs called How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Um, I love the way Foster does this song because, one, he told me it was his favorite. And he does it with such simplicity, but yet it's so heartfelt. And you can just tell it's like he's having a moment with the Lord, just him and God. So please enjoy this song, How Deep Our Fathers Love For Us. Now, 
we're going to read the scripture. If you would turn with me to Ephesians, the second chapter, I will be reading verses eight through nine. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. I'm grateful that salvation is free. And God gave us this gift a long time ago when his son shed his blood on the cross for us for our sins. And this gift is available anytime you want to receive it. But think about that as we go through the times that we're going through right now. Remember, our Lord went through a lot just for us. And these, as Paul would say, light afflictions. They are light. Just remember, we keep our faith, we keep our focus and our trust in the Lord. Now, we're getting ready to go down into a word, the word itself. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to Acts, the 8th chapter, I will be reading verses 9 through 13. Now, for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip wherever, astonished by great signs and miracles he saw. I would like to use as a thought or a subject for today, things that money cannot buy. Things that money cannot buy. Today, if you were to ask someone what what is needed most during these trying times, they would probably say money. Money to buy food, pay bills, and to keep a roof over their head. Yes, we need money to do things in this world. But there are some things that money cannot buy. And the Holy Spirit is one of those things. As we look at the first few chapters in Acts, we see where Jesus has been taken up to heaven. The apostles and all those who were with them in the upper room are filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter heals a lame beggar. Ananias and Sapphira died because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Now we get to chapter 6 where we see that the Hellistic Jews complained to the disciples about the Hebraic Jews and their widows who were overlooked in the daily distribution of food. The apostles met and felt their ministering the word of God took precedence over this issue. So they selected seven men, seven men who had to be full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom. They had to be spiritual. They had to be saved. And they gave this task to them to take on as their responsibility to make sure things were carried out properly. Stephen was one of these seven men. And he was so filled. Once they selected the men, they lay hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. He was so full of the Holy Spirit that his face shines like an angel. Stephen preached the gospel of Jesus Christ with such power that people believed and they were baptized in the name of Jesus. There were some, just like today, that accepted the teachings of Jesus Christ. And there were others who hated Stephen so much that they actually lied on him. He was falsely accused 
and sentenced to death. After Stephen's death, the church scattered and the word went all throughout the region of Judea and Samaria. They went the those who were followers of Christ, they went out through all Judea and Samaria and they were preaching the gospel of Christ. The apostles they remained in Jerusalem. Despite persecution of the church, the church kept growing, baptizing believers in the name of Jesus. Those who had scattered, they just went everywhere preaching and teaching the word of Jesus. Now, Philip was one of the seven deacons also who was filled with the Holy Spirit. He preached Christ in Samaria. When the crowd heard Philip and saw the miracles he performed, he had their attention. Unclean spirits came out of many, and those who had palsy who were lame, they were healed. They could get up and walk. They were healed. And the city was full of joy. Now there was a man named Simon who used his sorcery to bewitch the people of Samaria. He was known by those of both high and low esteem in the city. They believed he had what was called, they called the great power of God. They had great regard for him because he had bewitched them so long with his sorcery. But even with all of that, but when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and in the name of Jesus, they were baptized, both men and women. Darkness will try to cover light, but don't you know darkness has to yield to light? If you were to turn Go in the dark room. It's dark. You can't see anything. If you were to light a match or to light a candle, that darkness has to succumb to that light. Darkness has to run from light. It cannot supersede the light. So even with Satan trying to bring hatred and trying to bring all these things to pass, the light still shines. The church still grew. You can't stop the word of God. You can't stop it. See, they believed in the words that Philip preached when it came to Christ and were baptized. Yet they had not received the Holy Spirit. When the apostles in Jerusalem, they heard the Samaritans had received the gospel they sent Peter and John to help with the new converts. When they arrived, when Peter and John got to Samaria, they prayed that the new believers would receive the Holy Spirit. Because, see, even though they had been baptized in the name of Jesus, they had not received the Holy Spirit. So they prayed that they would receive the Holy Spirit. And many did. And they laid hands and they also received the Holy Spirit. See, the sorcerer Simon, even he got baptized in the name of Jesus. But when he saw the Holy Spirit was given by the laying on of the hands of the apostles, he offered them some money. And he said, give me also this ability so that everyone I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter says to him, May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. Like I read earlier, Ephesians, the second chapter, eight verses eight through nine says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. Not a result of works should no man boast. Here it is obvious where Simon's heart really is. Simon has been used to getting attention. 
He was used to receiving the attention from the Samaritans for years of his great sorcery. He had what's called false religion. Yes, he listened to the preached word. He believed it. He accepted Christ, but he did not have the Holy Spirit. It is believed that the Holy Spirit at this time, God allowed it to wait until John and Peter got there to show the Samaritans that salvation was from the Jews, that salvation was from Jesus and not through man's tricks. So he had them to wait. And then when they came, they prayed and the people got the Holy Spirit. But see, this is the thing. Even though he's like today, Simon's like a lot of Christians today. They have been in church for ages. Some of them grew up in church since children. They hear the word Sunday, every Sunday in and out. This is before Corona. We would go to church and you would every Sunday, they make sure they're there. Hear the word in and out every Sunday. But they wouldn't allow and don't allow the Holy Spirit to work in their life. That's why you have some people that call themselves Christians that are misrepresenting our Lord. They're functioning. They're doing acts, spiritual acts and things of the church, but the church is not in their heart. The Holy Spirit is not, they're not utilizing the Holy Spirit that they receive. Now we can receive the Holy Spirit without having someone else lay hands on us because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. But yet they won't allow the Holy Spirit in their hearts to grow. They won't feed that spirit, the word of God. They still want to try to live the Christian life through their flesh. And so they're saying, I'm saved, but they're misrepresenting our Lord. God is not pleased with that. He's not pleased at all. See, even though he did all those things, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. See, because the Holy Spirit, one of the things it does, it will guide you into the truth of God's word. It's not about self. It's about Christ. You've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So anything the true Holy Spirit tells you about, it's going to be about Christ and his word. It's going to be about God and his word. It's not going to be a self-centered you. That's how you know it's of the Holy Spirit, the true Holy Spirit, because it's of God. And it will only teach you the things of the Lord. And I tell you this, if salvation was a gift you could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. You cannot buy the Holy Spirit. I thank God that salvation is a free gift. That all can have it if they choose to accept it. But let me say this, any gift someone has, has to give you, it costs them something. Whether it's their time or money or both, it costs someone to give you that gift something. The gift of salvation costs Jesus. It cost him his life. He shed his blood so our sins could be forgiven. When a gift is presented to someone, it is up to that individual to accept it. Salvation is a free gift from God, but it's up to you to accept it. Peter further tells Simon, he says, you have no, you have no part of this ministry. You don't even share in this ministry because your heart is not right with God. You need to repent of all this wickedness and pray to the Lord in hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Now, if you recall in the previous chapters, Ananias and Sapphira died when they lied to the Holy Spirit. Mercy, mercy, right, is being given here. It's being given 
on him. Thank God, mercy and grace because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we now get to experience. We, you never know. Why is it something, some people, things happen to them if they do this and some people that don't? I can't answer that question for you. It's God's grace. We all need God's grace. And it is by his grace that we are here, that we're living every day, that we're still here. It is by his grace that we live, we breathe, we move, we have our being in him. It's by his grace. You can't do enough to earn salvation. It's been paid for. You can't do enough good works. It's a thing of the heart, people. I tell you, God is the God of your heart. Open up your heart and receive him. The Holy Spirit's job, one of his many functions, is to help you to live the way Christ said we're supposed to. That's a part of his job. But you have to allow him to do his work in you. If you don't, he's not going to force you. He's not going to force you to accept him. He's not going to force you to listen. He's not going to do it. He gave us what's called free will and choice. You choose who you're going to serve. You make the decision. You can't, ha I can't make your decision for you. You can't my make mine for me. You can't blame mom and daddy, sister, brother, whoever. You can't. I don't care if you weren't raised in a Christian home. If you're an adult, you've got ears. You choose every day to get up, take a bath, put your clothes on and do what you do. You can choose to learn more about the Lord. You can't blame others. Yes, it's important. Parents out there listening. It's important that you lay a foundation for your children. So they do have a springboard. The first five years of their life is so critical because you have the most influence over them. You got prime opportunity to teach them so much those first five years of their life. But once they get out into society, once they get into public school and get around other people even more, there's other things that will start influencing them. But they should be able to remember Something that you've taught them. When someone tells them something wrong, no, no, we're not supposed to steal. That's not how I was raised. That's not what my parents told me. I steal. And I'm sure there's some of you out there that do it too. Still can remember things from my childhood that my parents taught me. Things that I still today apply to my life. I find myself thinking about things. And saying, no, I was raised better than that. When I want to get angry or when I want to do or say something, I say I was raised better than that. Because I was raised in a Christian home. I didn't say I was raised in a perfect home. I said I was raised in a Christian home. My mother believed in the Lord. Her mother believed in the Lord. They were faithful not only in their service, but they lived it through their lives. They showed you Christ. That stuck with me. They didn't only say the words, but they acted upon them. That's the kind of light we should be in this dark world today. That's what we're supposed to be doing as his followers, as true believers in Christ Jesus. Your heart's full of wickedness. Peter's like, man... Yeah, you might have said the words, but it's obvious. You you know, you don't have any Holy Spirit or you didn't accept it. And so the one thing Simon says, now get this. Now, Peter don't told him, you, you know, your heart's full of bitterness. You're full of sin. You need to pray. You need to repent. Now, he told Simon he needs to do these things, right? This is what Simon says to Peter. Pray to the Lord for me. So that nothing you said will happen to me. He still don't get it. You pray for me. What about you praying for yourself? It's nothing wrong with people praying for you. But you at some point need to pray for yourself. 
God needs to hear from you. I can't repent for your sin. You have to repent for your own sin. There are some things you are going to have to do. But he's like, well, pray that that stuff don't happen to me. You pray. What about you praying? See, the old man with Simon was still there. That old man loved that attention from the people. That old man. That's why it's so important that you let the Holy Spirit work in your life. So the old man don't continue to dominate you and dominate your life. And the struggle that we all have daily. When you've got God on your side, nothing can overtake you. But you've got to feed your spirit. Full of faith, you've got to feed it the word of God. You've got to spend, find some time somewhere to spend with God. Do you, have you ever thought about the fact that he spends more time on you than you, on, you do on him? Think about the number of times in the day you have asked him for things. The blessings he gives you even though you don't ask. But yet, you don't want to spend time with him, but you want him to spend as much time as he possibly can blessing you. I'm not going to say no more on that, but I hope you think about it. After Simon says what he says, they, Peter and John, they further proclaimed the word of the Lord and they testified about Jesus. Then Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many of the Samaritan villages. Wow. Wow. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Remember that. He was the ultimate sacrifice, paying the cost of salvation through the shedding of, of his blood for our sins. Today, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You can buy a bed. But that does not mean you can buy sleep. You can buy a house, but that does not make it a home. There are just some things money does not buy. It cannot buy. Money can't buy true love. Money can't buy joy. Money can't buy peace. And money can't buy true friends. There are just some things, dear, you cannot buy with money. A heart that is turned toward God, that repents and asks God's forgiveness and accepts his son Jesus by faith can be saved. And let me tell you something. This gift is priceless. I hope you think about what I've just said to you. The fact that the apostles did the things they did had nothing to do with their ability at all. What it had to do with was their obedience. It had to do with their belief, not in their ability, but in Jesus Christ. And the fact that he could work through them to spread the gospel and help others. That's what's so important. So when you look at your life today. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Please do so. Please do so. He knows all about you and I. He knows the times we're in. We're no surprise to him. The times we're living in right now. No surprise to him at all. Not at all. Sinners waiting, looking for a savior. Those who are Christians, honey, let me tell you something. That sinner saved by the grace of God. That's it. 
hearts. They decided one day to accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. And I pray that they're living their life for him. So as we go down in prayer, I don't know what you need. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what you're going through, but I can tell you this. I do know who can help you. And that's Jesus Christ himself. He is there waiting and knocking at the door of your heart, hoping that you would just open it. So he can come and be with you and spend time with you. Don't let Satan keep you out there. Sin will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. Because it's not going to be obvious. There'll be pleasure in sin for a little bit. But let me tell you something about Satan. He'll take you out there on the, on the water and then let you drown. Get your eyes off your off of people who aren't doing you any good. Get your eyes off yourself. If it's negativity, get rid of it. Put your faith and your focus on the Lord. Let's pray. Lord. We are not worthy, Lord, to call on your name. We aren't. It is only by your grace. It is only by our accepting of your son, our acceptance, that you have forgiven our sins. That you have cleaned us up and given us the ability to start anew. We're spiritually born again. There are those right now, Lord, there's someone out there they're at a crossroads in their life. They don't know what to do. They, The people they thought they could depend on, they couldn't. They've been disappointed, let down, hurt. There's someone out there who's heavy hearted. Someone out there that's confused in mind. Someone out there that's sick. But no matter the condition, God, I know you are able Because you can heal, you'll deliver, you'll set free. You said to Moses, he said, who shall I tell him sent me? I am that I am. And what? Everything you need me to be, I am. That's who you are for us. So God, I pray we will call on your precious name. That we will humble ourselves before you. That we will not only believe and receive, but apply the word to our lives and our heart. God, you say the battle is not ours, it's yours. You fight on our behalf. Sometimes we just have to be still and watch your salvation work out for us. So, Lord, we're calling on the almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God, the creator of heaven and earth. The creator of mankind. Because God, if you can't tear, take care of it, no one can. You said all things are possible to those of us who believe. Especially when we believe in you. God bless those who are watching via Facebook, social media. I thank you for them. I pray you continue to bless us all. And forgive us when we fall short of your glory. But we want to say we love you and we thank you and we praise you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys. Once again, I get the pleasure of getting to talk to you for a whole nother week. I continue to pray for you. I pray you're praying for me. And we're going to get through this. I clear we are. I promise you we will. It says weeping and doing for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We it's it's not gonna be trouble don't last always, y'all. It doesn't. It can't. Because God is gonna show his power and he's gonna get the glory out of everything that happens. Stay safe out there. Keep your faith, keep your focus. Until next time, may the grace, peace, and love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest ruling about with you henceforth and forevermore. And if you would like to give to this ministry, 
My Cash App information is on the screen. And until next time, may God bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.